A Free Monster in Every Box by Richard Elsegger. The box tagline said Free Monster in Every Box. It was the last box on the shelf. I'd never seen this cereal before. The brand name was unknown to me, a sort of gray area off-brand. The stock clerk had poised it on the bottom shelf amid those less desired cereals, those cereals ignored by most everyone except the loyal few. My intention was to pick up my usual canister of oatmeal, the less fun cereal. This upstart, parked right beneath my oatmeal, demanded my attention. The colorful, sugary illustrations played with delight on the cardboard, swimming in a cool bowl of milk. They actually looked quite tasty. The red strawberry sprinkles prompted my taste buds in a Pavlovian way, and at once I had to try them. As for the free monster, I imagined a childish plastic toy at the bottom of the box, a manufacturer's lure to entice younger consumers to buy the product, more for the toy than the actual cereal. I picked up the lonely, somewhat dusty box from the bottom shelf and placed it in my shopping cart, and this time left the oatmeal behind. The box was large in its proportions, not the average size of most cereal boxes, and it promised to deliver on quantity, if not quality. I found no expiration date on the box top, and that made me reconsider my selection. Those strawberry sprinkles looked so tempting. I figured I'd take a chance. The cereal looked so delicious floating in that milk. I checked out at the cashier, and she handled the box with a curious look. I've never seen this brand before, she said, perusing the details on the box. Free monster in every box, she said, and laughed, bagging the cereal. It barely fit the plastic due to the enormity of the box. You'll have fun with this, she said. Looks so, I said and smiled. Probably overrated, I added. Can't judge a cereal by its box. Sometimes you can, she said. Yes, maybe so, I said, made payment and took my purchases outside to my car. I didn't live far from the grocery store and arrived home in ten minutes. The setting sun glared in my eyes, the last glimmering rays starting to disappear behind the rooftop of my garage. I carried my food to the doorstep and unintentionally dropped the bag with my cereal. It flip-flopped as it fell to the ground. I picked up the weighty box and the contents shifted as if there might be something large inside. All that cereal I mused. How was I going to eat all that cereal? Inside I put away my purchases. The dinner bell rang in my stomach, so I started cooking some chicken and rice. I decided to make it a movie night tonight. Friday night always presented as the optimal time for movie night when nothing else was going on. I hadn't had a date in over a month, so I needed to entertain myself with a few good epic flicks on my big screen television to take my mind off the fact that maybe I might very well be undateable. I laughed about that last part. I mean, I worked as a model in the modeling industry. I modeled clothing and even did commercials, so I wasn't all that bad in the looks department. Yet dating proved difficult for reasons I could not explain. I ate my dinner ravenously, filling up on protein and carbohydrates. My sweet tooth, never far away, demanded I rip into the new box of cereal that I had left on the kitchen counter. I put my plate in the sink, giving it a wash before stacking it on the dish rack. I looked at the cereal and read, once more, the tempting monster offer inside the box. Probably a plastic Frankenstein, or a paper werewolf, I mused. I tore open the top and opened the wax paper bag inside. The odor of strawberries and pure sugar filled my nose. I removed a large bowl from the kitchen cupboard and poured away to my heart's content. I looked deep inside the box, looking for the free monster, but saw nothing. It might be at the bottom. Like a kid, I poured out the rest of the cereal into a large cooking pot. Sweet dusty powder rose from the pot and intoxicated my senses. I combed through the cereal with a large spoon. The monster was nowhere to be found. I proceeded to pour some milk on my cereal and headed to the bedroom. I took the pot of cereal and the jug of milk with me in case I needed a refill. There wasn't much on, so I turned to paid programming and found a couple of movies. The first movie, ironically, was a horror show about an ancient and evil entity that possessed the body of a condemned murderer. Sounded as good a premise as any, so I settled in. I scooped up my first spoonful of cereal, preparing myself for a sugar high. I chewed up the crunchy sweet clusters and savored the strawberry sprinkles. 
The flavor ignited my taste buds, demanding that I take another spoonful into my mouth in rapid succession. A second spoonful quickly led to a third, and so on, until I finished the bowl in record time. I watched the movie with passing fancy, my attention drawn to this all-consuming cereal. I can't lie to myself. One spoonful got me hooked. I'm going to need a refill when I finish this box. I wanted more, and I wanted more right now, so I proceeded to dump the jug of milk into the cooking pot, bathing the cereal. It crackled and popped, sending sweet musical notes and aromatic delights to my senses. I dug in and ate at a voracious rate. I couldn't stop myself. This was the best cereal I'd ever eaten. I finished the whole pot and cast it to the ground. The movie played on, a blood-crazed supernatural thriller powered by horrendous scenes of gore and blood. When the movie ended, I felt sleepy, and before long I dozed off into a dreamless state. Come morning, I woke up with a startle. My right arm felt possessed of a lethargic heaviness, as if I had slept on it wrong. I touched my right arm with my left hand. It felt hardened and dried, like old cooked meat. My hand let go with revulsion. I pulled away the blanket and saw my bare arm, my right arm, disintegrating wizened flesh filled my sight with disgust. My left arm presented the same, the arm of an old rotting corpse. Terror filled me, yet I sensed no adrenaline. Fear occupied my chest, yet I sensed no racing heart. I sensed no beating heart at all. I got up from bed and ran to the bathroom on rotted, bony legs that creaked and cracked. I looked in the mirror. I looked at my reflection. It's true what they wrote. It's true. Free monster in every box.